matchup. Dark. Stats. Byung. Gumiho. And we're back. We're ready for our final match here in Group C to decide who moves on into the round of eight and who gets knocked out. Uh, we'll have to wait for them in season two if they even make it back. Yeah, Gumiho versus Ryung here. Going to be the final match of the day as Dark with two two ones that made him in his interview, as he said, yeah. very upset. <laughs> will be the first player to advance from Group C into that round of eight. Stats unfortunately eliminated. You know, showed some promise, though, especially in that last game that he played. I mean, holding on with two Colossus against the force that was coming at him was... It was insane. It was really, wild. really impressive. Like... <laughs> Like, you know, it's sometimes we have these games where, like, the loser I'm almost, like, you know, singing more praise about. And I feel like this is going to be one of them. Like, the fact that he lasted for that long with just a Warp Prism and two Colossi and whatever else he could afford, whatever else he could concoct and come up with to try to, to, try to fight back. Um, but in the end, Ryung takes it. So this next matchup is going to be a TVT. It is the rematch of what we saw earlier uh, just today here with Ryung and Gumiho. Um, this should be a fun one. Gumiho did come out on top. He did have a very bad game in game two in the best of three, but I think overall Gumiho is just seeming to be, um, I don't know, kind of bigger, better, faster, stronger in the he matchup. Does, he does feel a little bit more solid here in TBT with the exception of that kind of odd game number two. Yeah. And um, especially in the early game, it feels like Gumiho is a pretty good read on what he can actually get away with in terms of positioning and kind of pouncing on positions like we saw in game number one with that soft contain that basically just sealed the fate there for Young. But, you know, it's the final match. Anybody can win. Let's go to ESL Gresman to see who's going to be the final player to advance from Group C. On-site gaming, Young. Gumiho. All right, still in his purple city. Um, playing from on top of a building. <laughs> so let's see um, how Ryung plays this time around. It did just seem like Gumiho had a better handle on the matchup, a little bit more active, a little bit, especially in the last game, just able to kind of outgrow him. Um, we did have a lot of little pushes on two bases, though. So it should be a fun early game here to watch these two guys duke it out and see what they're going to do. We've got one gas being in mind right now for Gumiho, where Ryung is now taking two. Uh, so this game should take a little bit of a different direction. We're probably going to see the command center come down right away for Gumiho. And um, Ryung's going to try to do something. We'll see what that is. Could be like a 1-1-1 one, one, one or something like that. Yeah, I'm curious to see what Ryung's game plan is here. For Gumiho, it seems like it's just going to be a Reaper expand, I would guess. As um, SCB scout coming in. Gumiho, I, I'm trying to think back to the first series. He almost never SCB scouted, did he? Pretty sure it's mostly just been Ryung this series, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think he might be right about that. Um, so this is uh, SCB's going to come in here and see exactly what's going on. Yeah. Confirms it's just one gas. Both players producing a Reaper, and Ryung going to throw it on the factory. So probably will be that 1-1-1. One, one, one. Mm -hmm. We were talking about Gumiho going to be doing the same thing, but with a faster command center. So he'll be throwing out that second gas now. Yeah, and so this means that uh, it will be Gumiho on the receiving end of something. We're going to see exactly what that strategy is. There's actually a lot of different things you can do in TVT early on. So I try to not call it too early because, you know, you never really know what they're going to be coming up with here. Uh, looks like this first SCV is going to come over here and get scouted. Uh, the Reaper is going to be able to kind of, um, I guess, escort it across. Um... And so now we've got that command center starting a little bit later here for Ryung, but I kind of like Gumio's position better because I don't really feel like he's going to take you know, too much damage or have to deal with too much right now. I mean, it's a reactor making in a Hellion. And there was no starport made, so it's not a 1-1-1 one, one, one yet. It's just a two builds uh, where they're going to expand, but one just seems to kind of activate much quicker than the other. Yeah, I'm liking Gumio's position a little bit more too. We'll see if uh, Rung, Rung is able to get anything done, though, with two Reapers and a Hellion. You know, waiting for those first few units to pop out of that barracks. There's actually no going for an add-on. So wait, wait, wait a second. This could be pretty bad for Kumio. As those two Hellions only just now popping. Rung, though, not going to test it. 
It's going to fall back. Yeah, and, and we're in a situation where it looks like Gumiho wants to try to take the initiative. He is going to be getting Hellions in pairs. Um, Ryung is actually the first to get the Cyclone. That's about halfway done. I was a little worried there for a moment that Ryung might be able to pick off one or two SCVs with those Reapers before the Hellions got out, but I guess not knowing exactly what their timing is. Well, that could be like the worst case scenario, right? Is you lose like the SCV that's making the command center and then like, you know, they're just outside your base doing damage, mm. um, just delaying stuff. Um, but it seems like we should have a setup pretty soon here for Gumiho to try to push out. I think he wants to wait for that Raven. It's pretty common to basically get that Raven out and then like see if you can't run up and just disable some stuff and maybe take a, a you know, uh, explosive fight right at the start. That's yeah, such a person's whole unit, especially with the armor shredding and these early engagements being so impactful and, you know, the reduced cost and auto turrets. I mean, just so well rounded, especially in TVT. So we have a third command center, command center now coming in for Ryung. So the Hellions are going to be moving out. Let's see exactly what he has back at home. I mean, the six Hellions is actually quite a bit, and the Reapers are certainly not going to last that long. Um, they're going to get one shot. So he's going to come up here, and he already Whoa. is going to be able to take out both the Hellions, the Reapers, pretty much everything. Um, zones is back out, and I think we're going to have auto turrets chucked up here into the... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. see it for a second. Yeah, it is up in the main. I thought maybe he faked him out. I was like, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> no, auto turret gets dropped there in the main base, picking up two SCVs. Is Gumiho continues the pressure right now, attacking the Cyclone quite a bit, but instead just going to be picking off even more Marines. Yeah. As Ryung suffering a lot of losses here. Gumiho retaining most of his Hellions. And oh my goodness, those SCVs weren't mining this entire time. It seems like he's just kind of faster than him. Yeah, it does feel that way, at yeah. least in this game. I mean, those SCVs, unless there was a second turret. Oh. Uh, I think that is the second turret. So, yeah, Ryung, you're losing a lot of mining time right now. No, that Raven still has uh, has 60 energy now. Could come out and actually use that. Um, yeah, you know, look, he killed the nine SCVs. That's actually a lot. It's a for, lot for of SCVs. two bases. I mean, that was basically a success. You don't normally see uh, interactions like that go that well. So that, you know, it's very exciting. And keep in mind that Gumiho also had the faster expansion. So there's already a little bit of an economic lead for him. So to compound that now with this harassment, He's in a very good position. Couple that with a low ground third CC to the high ground CC of Ryung, and I'm really liking Gumiho's spot here. Now adding in two more engineering bays, adding in some more barracks as well, getting his Vikings, just filling out his tech tree. Looking solid. Man, Ryung still hasn't really recovered. He is, to this point, he still has no Marines. Yeah, and, and you know, um, this, I, I don't want to try to call this too soon, but it almost looks like there's a setup where you might just be able to get in there and kill him. Like, Gumiho's also expanding again. Gosh, that, that little engage just went so well. Two Ravens here. Oh, there's potential for some disables. Oh, that's, you gotta Cyclone find too. that annoying. He just <laughs> disables that <laughs> in the kind of little tit for tat that is TVT early on. This Raven's gonna swoop in once more and cause, uh, you know, more interruptions here with this auto turret coming down here. Picks off another two SCVs. You know, it's, it's these little paper cuts that are, are slowly piling up. Um, that, you know, truly are, are going to start to, you know, pull down the entire situation here for Ryung. I mean, uh, we still have a 10 worker lead. Um, we have more barracks finishing over here. We have the third uh, command center landed. Uh, obviously, for Gumiho, Ryung has done that as well, but I'm just worried that another attack could come in here and this could be a problem. A lot of auto turrets getting thrown down. Ryung lucky to save at least one of those Ravens. It's funny, too, because Stim is only just now finishing for Gumiho, which I thought finished, like, minutes ago. But uh, I Ryung's guess, yeah. just now starting his. Yeah. So. This does seem to be, like, a kind of popular style, though, is to basically get Stim pretty late and, like, try to get all these other more technical units and, and you know, have better interactions with that. Dang. And Yeah, I mean, he's just, he, he looks really good. Yeah, this is Gumiho's style, man. He's so comfortable just rapidly expanding, almost like a Zerg across the map here yeah. with Terran. Well, he's just doing more things at once, it really feels yeah. like. And then the, the pressure just hasn't stopped. I mean, it is really a death by a thousand slices, it feels like. Yeah, I all mean. All these cuts coming in. All, you know, over time. And then, you know, he's going to move up again. Um, he'll be able to block if there would be a fourth base over here. It seems like Ryung is ready to try to stop a drop, which, gets funnily enough, now. is going to get spotted by these Vikings. So this is, like, just another moment. Like, now he's going to have the air superiority. Yeah, this is crazy. So, just I mean, it's, like, it, it's actually nuts, like, how well he's playing. Yeah, basically everything that could have gone Gumiso's way has gone Gumiso's way this game. He's even going to get the siege tank here. The siege up on this CC with Ryung on the opposite side. So using the air superiority 
Yeah, That's I mean, a I force Young away. I just don't know what else to say. I mean, this is going to be a four base versus uh, two base soon. Um, once that fourth base finishes, he's going to relocate the command center down. But like, you know, I don't think that Gumiho is going to have any problems with that. Gumiho, by the way, I just looked down at the supply. It's like 50 supply ahead. Yeah, he's just been I mean, killing this, at this game. I mean, this is just in, an insane game. I mean, he is dominating so hard. Yeah, it's like the first series between these two is a warm up, and now Gumiho is just fully operational. Yeah. I mean, just playing so well right now. This position continuing to be sieged. And I see that Raven on the minimap coming back into the third base now for Ryan. Going to drop some more auto turrets, even more SCBs going down. Even almost got that Cyclone so close. Okay, so this is where I think it's going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Like, this is going to be a big drop in here. Keep in mind the eBays are over here on the side. So, like, if you kill that now... All right, never mind. Yep. No more casty, GG. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't, Don't even finish that it. thought. Like... That's going to be that. Yeah, at um, the end there, I think it was Gumiho at 170 supply to something like 100 for Young. Gumiho had 1-1 one, one upgrades on his Marine so much faster, and it really just felt like he got the better end of every single trade. His build, it felt like it was more solid as well. He had the faster CC. It was still able to put on the pressure on his opponent, and yeah, Gumiho just with a really clean win there. But as we saw in the first series, I mean, Young, he's good at TBT. So I think yeah. this is just, you know, one of those domino effect things where well, yeah. you lose momentum and Gumiho is a good enough player and he's so active on the map that he's not going to slow the roll at he, all. He's very good at looking at, at these different sets of units and kind of figuring out like, okay, I'll do this. I'll hit this and this and this. And then um, it, it just starts to snowball. I mean, it, it looks kind of simple, right? Like and a Raven swoops in and throws down an auto turret. So then you have your whole main base is not mining. They have to pull that. Um, but then he'll come in with these tactics and just frankly with good control and kind of trade out. And by the time he had killed, killed 10 SCVs, there was like a third command center up and running. On the low ground for Gumiho. Yeah, on too. the low It's like, okay, well, you know. Gumiho I don't just... know what else to say, guys. I mean, he's he's pretty scary. And let's keep in mind, there's a lot of Terrans in this GSL right now. Sometimes we have certain Star Leagues where it's like, it really comes down to are you good at this one matchup? Yeah, and that's... like that matchup might be TVT right now, and and Gumiho looking good uh, with his own style as well. Um, he's looking prime to take this unless Ryan could come back. So fingers crossed for him. We're gonna go into game two now as we close out Group C. On the streets, ba -ba -ba -bom -bom. <laughs> streets of what? Battle.net? What are we talking about? <laughs> the streets of What is the song that's playing? It's like you know, I mean, that's where I was raised, man. That's where I was raised. I was raised in a PC gaming chair on the <laughs> internet, trying my strats out when people were mean to me. I'm a hard dude. That was back in the day when people would pull the plug. They'd get really mad at you. Oh, dude, them. the first week I, I, I got StarCraft when I was a kid, uh -huh. I like I like disconnected when I lost. I think everybody did it at, at some it's point. Like I was weird like thing. a child, you're too. Like, you're like, you can't do it. You're like, no, I'm losing, and I can't accept that. I like, like, I like the game yeah. so much. Like, I can't accept the idea that I'm bad at it. Yeah. No, I, 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 I remember, because I started playing RTS when I was really, really young. I remember doing that once or twice, and then being like, I'm actually so stupid. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I, no, I remember. I remember like being in my bedroom, like disconnecting and like watching, like you know, like it, like having to like reload up the game and everything, and then just kind of realizing like, well, I'm this just is quit. just. I'm like in seventh grade. I'm already like, well, this is just probably not a good thing. I, I probably can't go on living my life like if this is how I'm gonna deal with not being good at a video game. You join a lobby and somebody checks your profile and it's like, oh wow, you're undefeated. Yeah. With uh, 20 wins, you but have, you've disconnected 30 times, man. That's unfortunate. You have five wins, zero losses, and 15 disconnections. <laughs> That's weird. You got to fix your router, man. Yeah, then, then, then people won't play with you. They're like, your connection's bad. I'm like, no, it's good. It's good. I promise you. Ah, uh, good old days. I used to have this problem. I don't know if you ever had this uh -huh. uh, or experienced I guess you might not have been in a position because, like, you started with, like, StarCraft II ladder, but... Uh, in the old StarCraft 1 days, they used to have these, like, websites where the, you would register, and it was, like, a ladder there that you could compete on, right? Oh. Um, and so you would, like, you, you would, you'd be on normal battle, you you get in a game, and you had to, like, download some client attached on there. Um, but you could also reset your ladder account. Oh, could so, you? So I would have this thing, like, I was, like, pretty good, but, like, I would go, like, 40 and, like, 4. four 40 wins 4 losses, right? But eventually, as you get high enough up in rank, you're like, you're, you're going to start losing about 50% of the games. If you're at yeah. where you're supposed to be, it's supposed to be about 50-50. Unless you're literally one of the best it, in the world. Unless That's you're the so exception. good. Yeah, exactly. Unless you're <laughs> so good 
that you pretty much will always, you know, beat everybody. So I would get to like 40 and, and four, and then it would be like 45 and eight. And like, I didn't like <laughs> yeah. that. I didn't like the way that my record looked. So I would reset it. Uh, and I had like, I had like a couple years where I just like wouldn't want to deal with the fact that I had to get to like a certain height. And it like ruined my lottery experiences. It was like, what am I doing? Like the only way you're gonna get better is if you start really competing against really good people that know exactly what they're up to, you know? I feel like a lot of people get ladder anxiety from things like this, in particular stats, like having a losing record, but yeah. you know, really the only number that matters is your matchmaking ranking. It's your ELO. Yeah, and yeah. The only reason that matters is because that's that's the most accurate refle reflection of your skill. Like if yeah. you're losing games, but you're learning from those games, no, you're actually a better player now. You know, it's yeah, it's you will get that. better. And I know it can feel glorious to be like, wow, like there's this guy on ladder and he's like 100 wins and nine losses. But you know, the only way you're gonna get to ever be that guy is to be the guy that has like 200 wins and 220 losses on yeah. ladder. You know, you gotta lose to learn. Yep. All right, so both players going to fast expansions. Gonna be home a little bit quicker than Ryung. Ryung opting for a faster factory. And um, I, I'm curious if this game is going to size up like the last one. It is a different build that's coming out here um, for Gumiho. He is actually Ooh, good. He loves his command centers, yeah, man. Yeah, very cool to see. He has a, a medevac out as well. They're both going to do it. Okay. Yeah, they're both greedy Gabriels after all. <laughs> greedy <laughs> Gabriels? You're going to greedy Gabriel, man. <laughs> you could have said greedy gamers, but it's Gabriels? Uh, yeah. Gabriels yeah, today? Yeah, yeah. It's a good one. Oh, okay, so he's going to spot this right out here. It's always so funny, these little dances. Oh, he might actually. Oof, it was Ooh, scary. I thought he might close. lose that one. It was close. I was thinking if those Reapers got a shot off, it might actually die. I think it might have. That was like 4 HP. Cyclone really low. But, um, yeah, this is Gumiho's, you know, his, his forte is just these kind of high multitask, high octane plays all across the map with rapid expansions behind it. And we saw that work to perfection. In the previous map, we've seen it work multiple times today against Ryung. We'll see if he can do it again here. Just continuing to power up, adding yeah. more barracks. Kind of a slow start here. Nice little macro game. Okay, so um, we've got you know the, the, the build-up continuing on right now. If they're both making command centers right now, there's no real interactions that we're going to have for a little bit, right? I mean, they, they need that third command center to kick in. Uh, nobody's really in the lead. Nobody's behind. You know, it's it's been actually a pretty slow TVT to start things off. Um, yeah. I do like the idea that, that Gumio has to just basically have this roaming cyclone and medevac because you can kind of disarm any encounter with that. And if there's a problem, you boost and run away. It is funny seeing these units dance in early game TVTs a little bit. Yeah. So Stim has started. It is going to finish uh, earlier for Gumiho. Not that there's necessarily going to be a timing there, but, you know, once Stim is done, the game is forever changed. Um, yeah, Gumiho seems to have a little bit of a tempo lead in terms of all the upgrades. Going for one engineering bay, infantry attack, and Ryung just now about to finish his double engineering bay. Yeah, it so. seems like he just has, like, a better build order overall here. It does feel that way a little bit. Both players now landing their CCs at the same time. And there was a... You know, a sizable duration of the game where Ryung was ahead of Gumiho in army supply, and I was wondering when that gap was going to close, but I guess Gumiho just able to, you know, power up a little bit faster here into the mid game is going to eclipse Ryung now in army supply and try to well, find a timing here with plus one infantry weapons. I just said, like, there wasn't going to be a timing. I guess there actually will. If he can get up here in time before the other stim is done. Ooh, no Ravens here for Gumiho, so this is going to be a ballsy play coming around the edge of the map into the main base. He's going to try and get in before any possible um, disables can come in on those medevacs. You get the scan in. Cyclone's going here. Able to attack that Raven a little bit, and this is wide open territory right here in the main base. And there yeah. are two siege tanks tasteless with a ton of Marines. I mean, this infantry is weapons about to complete. So many SCVs have already been killed. It's already up to 15, and it's going to get worse before oh, they get out. Oh no! The engineering base are oh, going to go down. Dude. This might just this be a game killing ends blow. the same way the other game ended, with the engineering base about to be killed off. I mean, this is wild. I think that Ryung should be able to <laughs> clean this up. Oh, he gets out he of gets it. He gets out. What? No disables coming in. He's going to chill on that planet. <laughs> He's on the planet. That's no moon. <laughs> That's actually the Death Star of Gumiho out there. Uh, Rung's going to need to add some Vikings into the mix if he isn't already because 
he, he's got to make up the supply differential that's just been created. I mean, he's now down 20 workers. Army supply also in Gumiho's favor as he got a pretty good trade there as Ryung rushed up the ramp to try to stabilize the situation. And Dude, he just got bopped. That was a bop. That was a bop. That was a bop. <laughs> he that just was bopped a man. textbook definition of a bop. Yeah. And... All right. Gumiho posturing in front of the natural expansion now of Ryung. Trying to get into good position. Going to siege in, or siege and stim in here to the natural expansion. Picks off a siege tank going for it. <laughs> he sees more engineering base. Deja vu. Set off to fight these Marines. He will trade out. That trade slightly in Ryung's favor. And I mean, the supplies, if those medevacs do get cleaned up, are oh. going to go. Oh, my oh, goodness. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, well, that, that's that's bad. That's more than half of uh, Ryung's tanks. And during this, right. he's able to drop at the main base, too. Pack These tanks are going to siege. Yep. I think Gumiho is about to book his ticket to the round of eight. Uh, Gumiho, your table at the round of eight is over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was... Dude, uh, he just owned him. Yeah, that, that was, was insane. That was a dominating 2-0. That was that crazy. Was a big change from the first series. I don't know what happened between that first series and now, but Gumiho feeling very confident, just playing out of his mind and able to take one of the cleaner 2-0s that we've had so far here yeah. in the GSL Code S. It's great, great series. Uh, Gumiho clearly worthy of going on to the round of eight. Uh, I said it before, but I'll say it again. There's a lot of Terrans in this GSL right now. TVT may be the most important matchup uh, if you're going to become a GSL champion. Yeah, it he, could be. He looked very good. No disrespect to Ryung, but um, Gumiho was way better. He had one weird game where he lost to Ryung, and like, okay, whatever, we can forgive that, especially when we see a performance like this. So we're going to be going um, into the interview in a second here, but wow. Um, definitely keep your eyes on this guy. Yeah. Going forward, I, w I would love to see him face off against Maru. What a performance there from Gumiho. And yeah. you know that he has extra builds in TVZ, too. He has all these quirky little mech things that he can do that he didn't get to show off today against Dark. Mm -hmm. So all of those are also going to be, you know, in the cards there for him. As sure. Let's go into the interview. Congratulations, Gumiho. He says, thank you. Oh, hold on, he didn't hear it. Congratulations. I can hear you now. Thank you. So you made it to the quarterfinals. How do you feel? I really wanted to beat Dark today, but my mech play just wasn't good enough. Anyways, and I'm just relieved. I made it anyways. When you said your mech play wasn't good enough, can you elaborate on that? Mm. So if I if I get ghost out a little bit earlier, I think there's more functionality, but. I basically led my army into the center, and I just got so much damage, so it did not go as I expected. Oh, your builds today seem a bit greedy. So I actually prepped for very long games, but once I saw the mutas come out, my upgrades were a little bit ahead of him. I figured if I occupied the center area, the game would be on my side, but his Ravagers were too good and just did too much damage over time. They're talking about the TVT matchups. They had two uh, TVT matchups today. <laughs> so the the first TVT match style and then the second TVT best of three match style were very different. Why was there such a contrast with these two best of threes? Mm. So, if I go for double command center right away, it feels like my opponents are a bit more panicked and they try to hurry to end the game. So, there's a little bit of a mind game there. It feels like the first TVT. Uh, Ryung stayed very composed. And he actually handled most of my build pretty well. But I guess, I don't know, I think Ryung was not in the right mindset. I think he was playing too hastily, and so it kind of played into my hands. So, 
not only here, but actually in Katowice, the Terrans are just looking very strong in general right now in StarCraft 2. What are your thoughts on that? I don't really know. <laughs> Personally, I feel like I'm still learning. I feel like I'm still growing. And especially in the matchup TVP, there are so many players who, uh, who can play a very formidable game. There's just a lot to learn, honestly. Um, whereas against Zerg, I feel like I don't have an answer. I don't really know the right way to play against them. Against Zerg specifically. Let's talk about that uh, build that you used today. Uh, is that an original of yours? I assume they're talking about the mech game. I think so. I thought my opponent would go for a triple base opening. So if I show Medivacs right away... Okay, maybe this is the game. I don't know what game they're talking about. No, I'm not sure either. They're talking about Medivac. It must be the TVT? I don't... Sorry, guys. This one's lost on us. Uh, you made it to the quarterfinals. Uh, oh, he's saying his goal is to make it to the offline match. He wants to see his fans in person and play in front of an audience. So he's going to do his best to see his fans. And that should remind you at home, yes, you. Someone just tremored in their computer chair. Um, you can come to our studio only on the final day. So the round of four and the finals are all in one day. Come down. You don't want to miss it. Yeah, should you can be see the players. Game. You can see us, the cast. You can be like, wow, they're real people just like me. <laughs> um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. And listen, man, I mean, you know, we've got at least one more year of GSL. We don't know what the future holds, but you don't want to not be there. Absolutely. It could be the last year. You want to come see the games in person. Absolutely. And cheer for the gamers. I mean, the GSL studio is so great, too, once it's, you it's know, sick, fully yeah. occupied. The games, having all the players right there, the characters yeah. and everything. I mean, it's... GSL production over the decade plus that it's been going on is just most storied esports top show. notch, man. So Group D is just around the corner. That's going to be at 6:30 p.m. KST uh, Thursday. Creator Innovation Classic and Bunny. No Zergs allowed. Get them yeah. out. No more bugs. Two out of the three Zergs already in the round of 16 advancing. It's going to be Independence Day, the movie. I, I'm it's the worried. humans and the Protoss is fighting. I'm worried, though, Tasteless. I'm worried about our boys, Creator and Classic, because Bunny, quietly, just one of the best Terran players in the world. Innovation beginning his comeback now here in the GSL. That's going to be another tough day for Protoss. And so far, we have four Terrans, two Zergs in the top eight. No Protoss just yet. Two of these players you see on your screen right now will join them. I hope we get at least one Protoss. I would like some parity in the round of eight. Please. But we'll see. I'll tell you what I want. I want only Terrans in the final four. How does that sound? <laughs> you want, would be happy. So you want it to be like kind of balanced. That's yeah. that's okay. I kind of see why that would be fun. But don't you think it'd be better if it was just only Terrans? Yeah, that's a yeah. good point, actually. Yeah. And people look at this and are like, what is this, like a, a, a futuristic war game on Earth? And it's like, <laughs> yes, yes. That's exactly yes. it. Yes. All the aliens are gone. We actually beat the aliens. The Terrans beat uh, the, the Protoss and the, and the, the Zergs. We're yeah, the best. That's that's the We're campaign. The we don't species. need a StarCraft 3. We don't need a StarCraft 3 campaign. The Terrans win. You see and then, it right then, here you know, Humans just continue to have conflict with each other forever. <laughs> it's kind of we learned nothing from that. It's sad. We defeated both the alien species, and we're like, you know, you we know what? We still can't. We still went to war with each other. Damn. That's what I want. But you guys, you, hey, well, I want all the races. <laughs> oh. Cool. <laughs> TVT for life, man. Uh, um, for real, though, I, I really <laughs> hope that we have you know, Classic or Creator make a splash here yeah. into the round of eight. I, w I would love to have, you know, each race represented in the round of eight and then the round of four yeah. as we get ready to move to the finals. But so far here at GSL, Terran's looking really strong. I think we're going to have some Protoss's advance. I think Fingers so, crossed. And, of course, when we get to the round of eight, I mean, things are going to speed up very quickly. We're going to have our four players for the final four very soon. Uh, so do join us uh, for next week for that. And again, the finals Thursday, same time, same place. So, yeah. Um, as a reminder, if you want to support the GSL, there's a Patreon for it. And uh, all that money, minus the small cut Patreon takes, goes to the prize pool. Yeah, all the proceeds from Patreon straight into the prize pool. So yeah. you are directly supporting the players, supporting your favorite esport, supporting the GSL. 
It's a good way to do it. And you got replay packs too. I yeah. mean, it's a $10 tier. You got replay packs. Yeah, That's check a the tiers good out. Deal. See what you could afford. Do the right thing. Absolutely. Um, good job today, State. This yeah. was a fun cast. It was a fun one. It. You've had some big shoes to fill. You've done a very good job. Thank it's been, you. It's been uh, an excellent GSL so far. Shoes are gigantic, man. I'm never going to fill them. <laughs> Actually, our toes are very small shoes. There's little size six <laughs> shoes you got to fill. All right, guys, that's all the time we have. We love you. We'll see you in two days. Bye-bye.